So in this section, what we're going to look at is when do you choose intermittent therapy? When do you choose continuous therapy? And that type of choice is sort of difficult. Frequently it happens based on what works in your hospital, what's available to you, um, what is the, uh, the magic pill that somebody took that morning uh, who makes these decisions, uh, things of that nature. So let's try to put it into a little bit more perspective and maybe uh, put, put a little bit more of a foundation on some of these decision making. So the first thing I think we want to do is take a gander at what the patient is, what environment is the patient in. And I think this is a nice slide that tells you that the hemodynamic stability is very important. The less stable somebody is, the more likely they're going to need continuous therapy, since continuous therapy is much more forgiving hemodynamically than is intermittent. The second is how much urine they produce. If they're able to control some of the volume with their own innate production of urine, then volume becomes less of an issue, albeit still an issue. The less that they're able to produce, the more you have to control volume. The better form of therapy for volume is probably continuous therapy. And then finally, how long are they going to have this? What do you predict that their uh, renal injury is going to last? Is it going to last only for a day or two? Or is it going to last for a week or 10 days? And if that's the case, the longer that it lasts, the more you probably will benefit from the use of continuous therapy. So if you look at the graph, the continuous therapy tends to be in the long-lasting and your chemodynamically unstable patient, whereas the intermittent form of therapy may also be used in unstable patients, but generally in the non-oliguric and generally in those that have a shorter duration of acute kidney injury. So with that as a background, if we can move on and say, well, if the patient's characteristics are those that were very important, then what are those characteristics? Well, volume status is an important issue, as we've just seen. The more someone's overloaded, the more probably you want to go towards continuous therapy. The therapy delivery demands, how, much, how aggressive do you want to be with them in control of urea? Are they very catabolic? Can you control that with intermittent, or do you need to go to uh, urea? control with continuous, the hemodynamic parameters of that patient, how stable or unstable are they, urine production as we've just seen, and then the etiology. And here's a, here's a controversial area, and we'll get into that in a later podcast, is controversies. But one of the areas is, if they have sepsis or other etiologies, they seem to do better in continuous therapy than in intermittent therapy. Yet to be proven, but there is a common practice thought that perhaps that's what's happening. So as we move on, we can see that volume, electrolyte balance, azotemic control, pharmacological considerations, very important, by the way, when you're on intermittent versus continuous therapy, the whole idea of drug control is different. Continuous therapy tends to remove more drug than does intermittent because it's more continuous. That's obvious. Non-renal support systems and experimental considerations are what's driving the goal for a lot of these therapeutic interventions. And so if we then move on and say, well, can we come up with specifics? Mean arterial pressure less than 73, probably better on continuous therapy. High acuity, a high CCF score, high uh, Apache score, probably better on continuous. High CVP, again, volume, better on continuous. Low cardiac index, again, hemodynamics, better on continuous. If you're needing a lot of pressors to keep that low mean arterial pressure, better on continuous. Again, this is all hemodynamics. Multi-organ failure, higher urgency, all tend to give you a better response with continuous therapy. Only that continuous therapy has been used in this. And if we further look at that and look at complications the uh, I, whole idea of sepsis, the weight of the patient, the delta weight from pre-morbid to morbid conditions, all driving a choice towards continuous therapy and away from intermittent therapy. So it would seem that what we have, based on a lot of these elements, is that intermittent therapy would be much better if it were in an uncomplicated acute kidney injury 
no problems, electrolyte abnormalities, especially potassium. We said that in our first ad. Continuous therapy, much more appropriate for the complicated acute kidney injury. For those that are longer, volume uh, dysfunction, higher nutritional need, continuous therapy tends to be a better form of therapy in the more complicated patient. So the patient, as well as the elements, will drive your decision to using intermittent therapy versus continuous therapy.